It's a rather unassuming day here in a rather unassuming town just outside of Chattanooga, Tennessee. At first glance, this could be really anywhere USA. But let's face it, things aren't always quite what they seem. You see, in 1929, the eyes of the world, or at least the eyes of the USA, turned here to the corner of Market Street and 2nd Avenue to this courthouse. Here, in Main Street, Dayton, Tennessee. Tennessee is, well, it's southern without being overly southern. I don't know what that means. <laughs> there are certain cities that very much embrace their southern roots. Dayton, Tennessee is certainly one of them. Welcome, my friends, to the beautiful town of Dayton, Tennessee. Now, I don't want you to confuse Dayton, Tennessee with Dayton, Ohio. Dayton, Ohio is all about things like aliens and aircraft. No, Dayton, Tennessee is all about things like monkeys and Christianity. Let me explain. You see, back in 1925, there was a teacher here in Dayton, Tennessee who worked for the state-funded public school system. He decided he was going to teach human evolution, which at the time was illegal in a lot of places, including Tennessee. So he was put on trial for teaching human evolution, during which time they turned this into a much bigger deal than it probably originally should have been. Uh, it became really a trial about whether or not uh, evolution or religion should be the final word in public education and well the town also turned it into a little bit of a tourist spectacle the problem was is the trial brought some attention that they probably did not originally intend but we'll get to that now there is a museum for the scopes trial inside the courthouse the old courthouse we're gonna take you in there today uh, assuming of course they allow me to then we'll, uh, we'll kind of look at the town a little bit because there's more to this town than just the Scopes Monkey Trial. So join us today, if you will, as we do just a little exploring. Exploring! I'm standing just outside the courthouse right now. This is the, uh, the former courthouse. As you can see right here, it's uh, not the current courthouse. There is a much more updated courthouse uh, right over there for uh, Rhea County. But this was the courthouse at the time and of note. And right down here on the sidewalk, this is kind of cool. As you can see right here, they have very important dates scrolled in the sidewalk. It uh, looks like the very last one they have was 2007, which was the uh, 2007 array uh, Rhea, excuse me, County Bicentennial, but then it goes down all these other important dates. Some of them, of course, are kind of scratched out, hard to see. Uh, let's see, 1987, Scopes Trial Reenactment. Lazy Boy, Tennessee, I'm not entirely sure what that is, but it happened apparently in 1973. 1966, the schools were desegregated. 1960. Huh. World War II, 1941. Of course, here's the big one, 1925, Scopes Trial. And as you can see, they have commemorated this particular one uh, by scratching a relief of the courthouse itself into the uh, cement. This is kind of cool too, I just noticed this, Rhea County Bicentennial Time Capsule enclosed by the citizens of Rhea County on December 3rd, 2007 to be opened on noon, December 3rd, 2106. I've actually been out here one time in the past. Um, it has been, it's been a while. It was actually before 2007. Uh, so this is new to me, this, this time capsule and, and all the stuff on the sidewalks. I gotta say, it has definitely uh, been redone quite a bit since the last time I was here. Right out here we have the historical marker just in front of the courthouse talking about the trial itself, uh, John Thomas Scopes, who was the teacher. That's where the name Scopes Monkey Trial comes from. Uh, and as you can see, they, they talk about Clarence Darrow uh, and uh, uh, William Jennings Bryan, uh, two of the great lawyers and orators of the day. Um, 
At the end of the day, Scopes was convicted, although as I understand it was thrown out on a technicality. Uh, didn't again go quite the way that everyone thought it was going to go. As I understand, they were kind of hoping to uh, appeal to their base and uh, you know really push forward the idea that this is a town founded on religion rather than on uh, science. But uh, and even though they convicted him, uh, it, it didn't help the town's reputation at the time. Just spoke to that gentleman over there. He is from uh, Virginia. He's traveling through. He is a very big creationist. He is uh, still making sure to stop and check out the history of this building. I'll be honest with you. Uh, I, I tend to be more of an evolutionist. But uh, that's the joy of history is at the end of the day, it still builds us into who we are. No matter which side of uh, the, the debate you fall on. Well, things like this at least. Got a couple of statues out here. This one right here is William Jennings Bryan. He was the uh, presidential nominee, the Secretary of State, Congressman, and of course the lawyer who uh, was prosecuting on behalf of the state. Over here is uh, Clarence Darrow. He was the lawyer for uh, the defense. He did end up losing this particular trial, but uh, he, he made enough really good points that uh, he, he certainly ushered in a new era for uh, public education. And here at the foot of the Rhea County Courthouse, you can see this is the Scopes Monkey Trial Museum. Please enter through the front or back door of the building to visit the area of the Rhea Heritage Scopes Trial Museum. And here, of course, is the entrance. National Historic Landmark. Yeah, right. I don't know why this is here, but it's amazing. Now, I'm keeping kind of quiet because this is still a working building. It's not just a museum. This is still a county building. But right over here, Scopes Trial and Heritage Museum Basement. Yeah, this isn't creepy at all. Just keep going. Just reach the bottom and this is the first thing you see. It's the uh, clock tower mechanism. Save the clock tower! Save the clock tower! According to this, 1893. All right, looks like this is the museum in earnest. Now, uh, this is largely paid for by Bryan College, uh, who is, of course, named after Bryan. So um, you will definitely see leanings towards that direction quite a bit. Also worth pointing out, we are on the Trail of Tears here, which is really its own video. Uh, that is apparently Curly Fox and uh, Hargis Pig Robbins. I'll be honest with you, I don't know who they are. But I'm kind of a big deal. But, uh, hey, that's what Google exists for, right? I think this end is the actual Scopes trial portion of the museum. Yeah, I'm gonna say yes. So here's a little bit of background on the Butler Act. And the Butler Act is actually what uh, started this to begin with. This is where it was decided that you can't teach uh, evolution or, or several other things in publicly funded schools, in this area at least. And this piece right here just kind of goes over John Scopes. He was the teacher in uh, question, kind of goes over a little bit about his time here. This is actually a chair from his apartment. And you know what's crazy to me is to think that this was only 1925, which yes, it was 100 years ago. But for those of us like me who are Gen Xers, uh, this was only about 50 years before I was born, which is kind of crazy to think. Here 
Here's uh, some of the people who were part of this trial. Uh, these are the uh, folks from the Tennessee government generally. And these, of course, right here are the lawyers. Uh, this is William Jennings Bryan, Clarence Darrow. This is kind of interesting. It says here he was the uh, Secretary of State for uh, Woodrow, Woodrow Wilson and three-time presidential candidate, also called the father of the modern Democratic Party. Um, probably not really the modern Democratic Party, but I know what they're getting at. Right here is Clarence Darrow, one of the more prominent lawyers of the day. Uh, certainly not as famous at the time as uh, William Jennings Bryan over there, but uh, he, he certainly helped shape what uh, American law is these days. Kind of interesting here, they talk about how after the monkey trial term was coined, they brought in a gorilla, and you can pay a nickel to see him here during the trial. So there's that. Like I said, it uh, it was intended to be a bit of a uh, circus, and it certainly did end up becoming one. This is kind of cool. This is the uh, circuit court minutes from the Scopes trial here in this book, and as you can see, uh, most of it is handwritten, which um, you know typewriters obviously existed well before. Uh, 1925 so I'm a little surprised by that but it is what it is uh, speaking of which court reporter for the scopes trial okay so the court reporter did have this typewriter so apparently the minutes were handwritten for another reason but there's a, a press pass press badge well, actually, excuse me, press pass and a sheriff's badge. Here they talk a little bit about the uh, verdict. As I mentioned, uh, it was a guilty verdict. Uh, the teacher in question was fined $100, although he never did pay it. Uh, and everything was turned over uh, not long afterwards. Uh, interesting to note, however, that the, uh, the law, the Butler Act, uh, was on the books until 1967. All right, I think we're gonna head back up to the streets. Now, not long after the final verdict in the Scopes Monkey trial, uh, William Jennings Bryan actually ended up passing away here in, uh, in Dayton, a matter of days afterwards. He died in his sleep. Uh, afterwards, Mr. Darrow, he went on, he practiced for a little bit longer, had a couple of other fairly big wins, and then retired. And uh, John Scopes went on to live a, a long life as a little bit of a figurehead for uh, evolution as a whole, as well as what kind of separation there was between church and state in terms of education. Because even though evolution was defeated in terms of what can be taught in the schools in this building, it still ended up opening the door for its eventual evolution. And I have to say, it is amazing how the world looked at things differently just because of some of the things that happened in this courthouse a hundred years ago. Of course though there's still more to this city than just the trial and the courthouse. As you can see there's still a cool little town to explore. And if you've been on this channel before you know I love a good little Main Street. The gathering spot looks like it uh, I thought it was a antique store to begin with but I think it's just sort of like home goods but with a southern country flair. Maybe we'll stop in there in a little bit if they're open at that point. When you get to the point where you start exploring these downtown areas especially in the south you realize that the uh, opening hours tend to be somewhat limited. Oh well, look you can get an autographed hassett. And how do I know I'm in the south? A lot of strawberries here. Also, that chef's hat says poo. How about you guys? Are you also poo chefs? God, I hope not. Well, who needs the gathering place when you have the professional building? I gotta say, that is a professional looking building. Don't be racist, I am a building. 
right up there we got a sign discover tennessee trails and byways and pie in the sky moon pies to mountain high trails if you are at all interested in seeing what pie in the sky is and it's it's actually a very cool restaurant slash zoo slash playground slash well, i'm not sure really what all i'd call it i do have a video of that it uh you know i'll, I'll link it above it's an older video i was less gray and well just generally less at the time I believe that takes me about to the end of uh, Main Street. As you can see, it's not the most lively Main Street, but you know, in terms of history, it's got it. And that means it's time for me to head on down that way. One thing I could definitely tell you from walking around Dayton, Tennessee today, this is a town that loves visitors, loves their Bible, and hates turn signals. You know, I gotta say, I enjoy when a town could approach itself with humor. We have the Dayton, Tennessee, Monkey Town, home of the Golden Eagles and the Strawberry Festival, which explains all of the strawberry pieces we saw, but not the push off. Starting to look a little overcast. I'm kind of hoping we can get all the way down Main Street and see what all there is to see before the uh, Tennessee weather starts pummeling me. Actually leaving Market Street that I've been on and heading up the side street of the actual quote unquote Main Street, which is funny because the main street is the market street the market well you know what i mean either way we're heading up here saw some stuff that looks like it could be interesting oh i like this one it's the monkey town mixed martial arts as you can see there's a lot of trophies here which tells me that they might have a sense of humor but they take your self-defense seriously no mercy stopped over here to see this apartment building and i kind of like this look at this you got green apples growing out on the sidewalk right here in front of this very cool looking old style apartment building wow that's a nice tree okay i'm not sure what this is yet but i have the camera on so that you could find out with me a huh, little courtyard quiet courtyard i'm guessing they have cats but there's some chairs over there, so I think this might be private. I don't want to go too far in, other than just to step over and say that it is absolutely beautiful in here. It's across the street from the professional building, in case you were curious. I know where that building is! Ah, art classes! You could learn to paint, draw, kids and adults. Goodbye, sweet Pushef. Stop calling me that! I'm always a big fan of interesting architecture, and I gotta say that right there, to me, counts as interesting architecture. Look at the way that... These, these little balconies and patios surround the building. The doors are up on the second floor. I can smell weed. Things like that. Okay, I get it. Evolution bad. Smoking good. How about that? Looks like we've stumbled onto a small brewery. This is the Monkey Town Brewing Company, established in 2014. Looks like it's a restaurant, not just a brewery. A little, little early on a Friday for a brewery, especially since I don't drink, but right next door is First Avenue Pizza Books and Treats. So it's a brick oven pizza baker, homemade ice cream, and bookstore. Well, that right there sounds like it's more up my alley. You know you've stumbled onto a city that is reclaiming itself when they've painted wings in the building. In this case... Wings with monkeys. One does have to wonder if they get a little bit busier at night, though. As of right now, it's 3 p.m. on a Friday. And as you can see, not a whole lot going on. Not a whole lot open. But boy, they sure do have a lot of gathering places. Yikes. Okay, that, uh, that's seen better days. Look at that right there. Very cool, old-style Coca-Cola mural. Uh, it looks like there was a coffee shop there at one point. You can't really see the letters all that well, but you can see that the word coffee and shop are there. Uh, certainly not a coffee shop anymore. Very cool car right here. I know nothing about cars, but I can tell you it's a Ford truck. And it's old. And it's here. So subscribe below, I suppose. You're gonna love it. 
Apparently the uh, local beekeeper association is uh, selling bee bread, which can be eaten by humans and can be found sometimes in comb honey and chunk honey. I, uh, I know what all those words mean, I'm just not entirely sure what they mean together. Just outside of downtown Dayton, I saw this on the way in and I had to stop. I mean, really, how often do you get a chance to grab some zombie ice cream? That is incredible. So many things look good, but I think I'm just gonna do myself a brain freeze, which apparently is irresistible. Why, yes, they do have entertainment. I ended up switching over to a coffee milkshake, but I have to say, regardless of which one I got, I feel like I can't go wrong. Okay, moment of truth. Hard to get through the straw. But not bad. I don't know if you can see, but there are little <sighs> bugs, uh, <laughs> bits and pieces of things in there. I think they're little, I don't know, hopefully they're not coffee grounds, but it's pretty good. I'm gonna give the zombies a passing grade. Bringing us right back to the Rio County Courthouse. I believe that is just about going to call it for us from Dayton, Tennessee. Hey, if you haven't done so already, I sure would appreciate it if you would uh, go ahead and reach down below, hit that uh, thumbs up and that uh, subscribe button. And uh, did I mention that we'll see you again next time when we do just a little exploring?